morning. Uh, I have a couple of announcements. And uh, first, I want to uh, make an announcement for uh, Steve Roller. Uh, you'll see in your bulletin a sheet, and he has a request. As you uh, probably know, we usually on Christmas Eve, prior to the 7 p.m. worship, we have uh, instrumental music. And uh, not, not just instrumental music, but music time. And uh, he's asking for anyone who plays an instrument to uh, reach out to him. And uh, if you do that, his information is all on the bulletin board or on this sheet. And uh, we have another announcement, which we've all been waiting for. Jim? What time, Jim? Okay, thank you. Okay, with that, let us uh, make our beginning in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please rise. Shouted from home. 
prayer of confession. Holy Lord, as we stand in your presence, we are aware of our sins of thought, word, and action. We have not always lived our lives according to your will. We have often failed to live up to your expectations. We have all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But if we know your promise that if we confess our sins, you will hear our cry and grant us your forgiveness. O oh Lord, hear us now as we confess our sins to you. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, that we may us, that we know us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, Merciful Father, in holy, in holy baptism, you declared us to be your children and gathered us into your one holy church in which you daily and richly forgive us our sins and grant us new life through your spirit. Be in our midst, enliven our faith, and graciously receive our prayer and praise through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We sing White as Snow. White as snow, white as snow, though my sins were as scarlet, Lord, I know, Lord, I know, that I'm clean and forgiven. we speak responsively the psalm psalm 149 praise the lord sing to the lord a new song his praise in the assembly of the godly let israel be glad in his maker let the children of zion rejoice in their king let them praise his name with dancing making melody to him with tambourine and lyre the lord takes pleasure in his people he adorns the humble with salvation. Let the godly exult in glory. Let them sing for joy on their beds. Let the high praises of God in their throats and the two-edged sword in their hands to, to execute vengeance on the nations and punishments on the peoples, to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron. 
to execute on them the judgment written. This is honor for all his godly ones. Praise the Lord. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you knit together your faithful people of all times and places into one holy communion, the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant us so to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living that, together with them, we may come to an unspeakable joys you have prepared for those who love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the first readings. Our first reading comes from Revelations chapter 7. Our message today is based on these readings. After this I looked, and behold, a great multitude that no one could number from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb, and to all the angels. All the angels were standing around the throne, and around the elders and the four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these clothed in white robes, and from where have they come? I said to him, Sir, you know. And he said to me, These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore, they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them from his, with his presence. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them nor any scorching heat. For the lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd and will guide them to springs of living water. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle today comes from 1 John chapter 3, beginning at verse 1. See what kind of love the Father has given to us that we should be called children of God. And so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now, and what we will be has not yet appeared. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he is. And everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the fifth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Seeing the crowds, Jesus went up on the mountain, and when he sat down, his disciples came to him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the pure in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the gospel of the Lord. We'll join together in our confession of our faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, 
and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the resurrection of the bodies, and the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated for the hymn of the day, standing for the last verse. forward the child okay hi guys so you know what today is called it's a very special church day of the church year what all saints day what do we do on all the saints day what do we what do we think about? David? We think about Christians who have passed before us like the bank offering. Yeah, right. And they're very special. What's a saint? A saint is someone who believes in Jesus Christ. Someone who believes in Jesus Christ. Yes, exactly. So is a saint somebody who's perfect? No, 
No? Well, a saint is somebody who's holy, yet there are also people who have sinned. You know, we, our, revel, our reading from our revelations today is written by a saint, Saint John, and uh, there's several, there's lots of other saints. You, you can think of another saint. Saint Jesus? Yeah. Well, Jesus, yeah. 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 Now, if we think that saints are holy, we know that all people sin. Now, how can that be? How can they be holy and, and still be sinners? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, there is St. Patrick's Day after St. Patrick. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. No. Okay. So back to back back to our, our talking about saints. You know, we're all sinners, but we're saints at the same time because of what? Because of what Jesus has done for us. Jesus has taken our sins away from us. So God looks at us as if he's looking at Jesus. So we believe in Jesus as our savior and yet and trust in our baptism. And God looks on us and says, there's a saint. It's okay. Can we pray together? Dear Lord Jesus, we thank you for bringing us to be to church and to uh, saving us, to dying on the cross, to bring us uh, to you so that we may be with you and for all of those who have passed before us and those who will in the future pass in trust and believing in you. We ask these things being with you, Lord Jesus. Amen. You can go back to your seats. Thanks. <coughs> so I want you to think for a minute about some event that you've been to, a large event. Uh, perhaps it's a, a concert or some kind of a rally. How about the National Christian Youth Gathering or uh, the National uh, LWML Rally? or national convention. Perhaps you've seen some TV coverage of a very large event showing a very, very large group of people. And there are so many people that there's standing room only, and the crowd is dancing and waving their arms, and they're singing. Maybe it was some kind of, kind of like a party, a big, huge car party. Now, imagine that group being even larger than what you saw, with so many people in it that no one could count. It would be impossible to count all those in the crowd. And even though many in the crowd are far, far away in the back, they can still see the person up in front, the person who has the center of attention, just like if they're on a jumbotron, except there's no electronics involved. Furthermore, that crowd holds people, family, friends, people you hold very dear, and people you've never met before, but you all have something in common. But then it ends. It's all over. It was like a dream, and you're back to your regular everyday activities. Now, putting that picture aside, let's consider this morning's readings. The text given, by, given to John, and you probably saw this coming, Unlike that dreamlike picture I just painted, John's depiction is of a scene that never ends. It's continuous for all eternity. So again from Revelations, after this, I looked and behold, a great multitude that no one could number from every nation and all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes with palm branches in their hands. Note that John began that with after this. So it's good to look back. What came before the after this? What's the context? In previous chapters, John describes in symbolic language the calamities God will unleash upon the earth and mankind in the end times, a great tribulation. But now his focus shifts from that cosmic upheaval and judgment to the salvation of God's elect. John now describes the eternal reward that comes, that awaits for those who persevere to the end, to those living in the shelter of their baptismal grace. 
the number of people is so large that no one could ever count them worldwide from every nation, every tribe and peoples and language, all standing there before the throne. It is truly a great multitude, and it includes you and I. What are they doing there before the throne? They just milling around? Is this some picture of a future church? I'll come back to that. But first, let's consider today the present church. Today, we presently face struggles as God's church on the earth. This church, the present church, the church that LCS is part of, is sometimes referred to as the church militant. The church militant is defined as those Christians on earth, including you and I, who are engaged in a continuous war against the enemies of Christ, against the ravages of original sin. A little further on in Revelations chapter 7, verse 13, we read, Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these clothed in white robes, and from where have they come? I said to him, Sir, you know. And he said to me, These are the ones coming from the, out of the great tribulation. The great tribulation. As I mentioned earlier, John had just come from describing the hardships of the end times. God's declaration that things would get worse before the final bell sounds, before that great final exam and class dismissed, the final judgment. So for now, we live in the church militant. As we look at things around us, do we wonder, like probably our forefathers did, can things get worse than this? Is this the great tribulation that are preceding our Savior's return? Well, Matthew in chapter 24 and, and Mark in chapter 13 say, concerning that day and time and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, nor the Son, but the Father only. And so, in the meantime, here as the church militant, we pray, come, Lord Jesus, come as we await his return. We pray for Christ's return as we continue in his grace, doing the work that he has called us to do until that day when we enter his church triumphant, the church triumphant. Those members of the church who have died in Christ, along with those believers still alive when Christ returns, and are enjoying eternal happiness and rest through direct union with God. Our readings this morning, as we celebrate All Saints Day, refers to those members of the church who have died in Christ as a great host clothed in white robes. And it's God's desire for us to join that great host robed in white, to be part of his church triumphant. And this is why now, as we, as the church militant, establish congregations, this is why we seek to be faithful in reaching to the lost in our community year after year. This is why we call pastors. We build sanctuaries. We teach Bible classes in Sunday school. We plan for the future. We pray in our homes with our families regularly. And yes, we even build kitchens to support the Lord's work through us in Bedford. But let's not be deceived. We don't do these things to earn points towards becoming part of that eternal kingdom, the church triumphant, but rather it's our loving response to God's gift of salvation. It's really our true reason for being here. Every human being was created to worship the true God. As Paul said to the church in Ephesus, the church militant, we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God has created in advance for us to do. Did you notice those action verbs? We were created in Christ Jesus to do those things God has already prepared for us to do. Ours is a response 
to what God has already determined we should do. God is the initiator. We are the responders. I'll come back to that passage from Ephesians a little later. But first, consider this. Why did God first give this vision to John to share with the seven churches and many others in future generations? It's because he knew that the faithful saints of these congregations had struggles in the past. They were going through struggles in the future and in the present, and they would encounter more and more. Sin was alive and well in the pagan cities of ancient Rome, but indeed it all began, it all began way back in, in, the, in Eden, back in Eden, the Garden of Eden, where man once created in God's image, in his shame and sin, hid himself from God in the garden. And because of his sin, man was no longer allowed to even look upon the face of God. Speaking to Moses, God said, You cannot see my face, for man shall not see me, or shall not see me and live. Man would die. Deuteronomy chapter 33. In the seven letters that Jesus dictates to John in the previous chapters of Revelation, we hear of false apostles, false teaching, sexual immorality, Jezebel-like priestesses, spiritual lukewarmness, and much, much more. Sounds like a lot, like today's world. Even much of the church is confused on what marriage is, how sexuality should be experienced, and who created the world in the first place. Yet, as we heard in the Beatitudes in today's gospel, Jesus knew that his faithful church would face challenges and tribulations when he said, Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. God, through John, gave this vision of the future of that church triumphant as that which the faithful would enjoy after the day of resurrection to encourage us about what our individual future is and what our future is as a congregation. This is your future, risen, bodily living with the Lord, worshiping, and singing to all eternity, for all eternity, salvation belongs to our God, namely the one sitting on the throne and to the Lamb, amen, and singing blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever, amen. We're 11, chapter 7 of Revelations. Knowing this is our future, encourage us, us to be faithful and active witnesses, singing those same things in the present, here in the church militant. In the vision given to John, that great host, we can almost envision a big party when the elder asks of John, who are these clothed in white and where have they come from? Of course, he, the elder, knew who issued the party, rec party invitations. He knew who these revelers were. So John replies, sir, you know. And people, you know too. It's these people listed behind me and on the side wall. It's many like them to come. It's Margaret. It's Susan. It's Peggy. It's Pastor Fletcher. And more to come. It's the multitude that no one can number. And it will be you and I. Now there's a reason to celebrate. A party. But there's no blowing out of candles at this party. This party will never come to an end. This multitude is standing in front of the everlasting light, the light that came into the world, the one and only true Son of God, Jesus Christ. 
So here, here in the church militant, or church, excuse me, here in the church triumphant, man is again face to face with God, the God who in the beginning created him in his image, intending him to be in God's holy presence. And now through Christ, that true image is fully restored for all time in the church triumphant. Sir, you know. And the elder in John's, respond, in John's re revelation replies, these are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. This vision to John, to John seems full of irony. The last thing you'll want in the white robes, of course, would be blood. That stain is permanent. Yet, the blood of Jesus, that blood cleanses permanently because it's payment in full for sin. It is a blood that continues to cleanse you from sin today as you hear of it and as you drink of it here at the altar. As the earlier hymn to the Lamb in Revelation chapter 5 states, for you were slain, and by your blood you ransomed a people for God for every tribe and language and people and nation. This vision is one of the most extensive descriptions in Scripture of what we will see and what the church will do after Christ's return on into eternity. So consider your future as Christians, as a congregation, once again. I want you to join me in the following. If you look on page 8 in your bulletin, right under the word sermon. You see a portion of today's lesson, but I've changed the uh, third-party personal pronouns to make it personal to you. So please join me together as we read this. Therefore, we are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter me with his presence. I will hunger no more, neither thirst any more. The sun will not strike me or any scorching heat, for the lamb in the midst of the throne will be my shepherd. And he will guide me to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from my eyes. None of our years on earth have been without tears and pain. Surely there will be more tears in the years to come as you have, until you have left your earthly journey. Of that you can be very sure. You have shed tears, no doubt, in saying temporary goodbyes to some of the saints of your family who you hold very dear, your extended family, our church family those who are now with the Lord. But nothing, nothing has ever, and nothing ever will separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. From Romans 8, he refreshes us daily for the work in the world and our service to him in his church. But one day, sin will be no more. No more hunger or thirst or struggle. Our baptismal garments will be exchanged for the permanent role of resurrected glory. And God will wipe away every tear of pain and suffering and from our eyes. You, followers of Christ, will see him face to face. You'll be before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. Earlier I quoted from Ephesians, your God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works which God has created in advance for you to do. We, you, are Christ's workmanship. You see, this is your ultimate work, the good work, the good work you were created to do, to be before God, before his throne, and serve him day and night in his temple. To sing salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. There will be no need for an elder asking, who are these? For it will be you and me, you have, who have washed your robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb.
And so now, may God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless and keep you until that day as you await your great reward. Amen. Please stand for prayers. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Father in heaven, remember the poor in spirit who gather this day to receive your grace and steadfast love by which we are made rich in Christ. Lord, in your mercy. God, our Father, you have set apart a people for yourself and washed them in the blood of the Lamb to be your own. Restore us daily through repentance and forgiveness and renew our hearts and spirits in holiness, righteousness, and faithfulness. Lord, in your mercy. O oh God, bless all ministers of the gospel and the congregations committed to their care, that the comfort of Christ's sacrifice and the joy of his resurrection may be proclaimed to all who grieve their sin and mourn their dead. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious Father, remember all civil authorities in your kindness and give them wisdom, courage, and integrity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of compassion, be near to the sick, the aged and infirm, the dying, the grieving, and all the afflicted, especially David, Lynn, Joyce, Michael, Dan, Carolyn, Henry, Barbara, John, Richard, Bill, Anetta, Carol, Lorene, Beth, and Jimmy. Grant healing according to your will and comfort them with a certain hope of the resurrection. Lord, in your mercy. In joyful expectation of the resurrection to life eternal, we remember before the Lord our departed family and friends who have gone before us in faith and all those who are in our hearts and minds today and in the past year, Margaret Letourneau, Peggy Wang, Susan Hollis, Reverend David Fletcher. I hear a voice from heaven saying, Write, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord henceforth. Blessed indeed, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors for their deeds follow them. Let us remember these thanksgiving, with thanksgiving, those who have gone before us with a sign of faith, for they were redeemed by God. We gave them new life through his Son in holy baptism. He nourished them in the company of his people at his holy table. In his mercy and wisdom, he summoned them to his nearer presence so that they may rest in his blissful peace forever. Amen. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their need. Hear us as we pray in his name as we, he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless and keep us. The Lord make his face to shine upon us and give us his peace. You may be seated. Blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful, where streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name when I'm found in the desert place, when I walk through the wilderness. Blessed be your name. 
Blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. 